This is Karen with NewClevelandRadio.net, and it is time for Love Letters Live with Janet Galen. Welcome, Janet. Thank you, dear. Am I, I'm going to introduce Nick now? Absolutely. Okay, thank you, Karen. Nick, hi. I'm so glad to see you. Hey, great to see yeah. you. You know, you're such a nice man. This has been taken so long that I was so touched that you remembered that I wanted to get you for Love Letters Live. And David Zimmerman tells me that award ceremony I met you at was five years ago. <laughs> yeah, you know, right. I guess time flies when we have good people around us. And, uh, it, it good intentions. I mean, it, it flies anywhere. Okay, so I'm going to introduce you to our viewers. Um, I want to introduce Nick Novicki, who is an actor that many of you probably know from his work. And many of you may like to know some of the other things he's doing. So can I just start right in asking you a question? Sure. And that is, and I'm always curious when people have an exceptional talent, as you do, when did you first realize that in life? Well, um, and what, for those and what that are- you to acting? Yeah, yeah. For those of you that can't see me, because some of you may just be listening, I'm a little person. So I'm three foot 10. Oh. And really early in my life, I, I started to learn how to use comedy to be an icebreaker and to kind of get people comfortable and familiar with me and myself as being a little person. Mm -hmm. And especially that, growing was up- that, Was that difficult? You know, it never was. I've always been a little person and I've always been kind of an extrovert. Oh so, uh, yeah, you're such a charmer that it's, yeah. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> well, that, I mean, that's, uh, you know, I guess that's very nice of you to say that I am a charmer, but uh, I think it, you know, it was sort of a comedy and performing became a uh, sort of a mechanism to, to break the ice, to sure. win people over, uh, to get myself out of situations. <laughs> Was that like in, 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 in early grammar school? Yeah, in early grammar school. So I learned that rather than kind of be the joke, I could be involved and, you know, be a comedian. And I was good yeah. at accents. And if oh. people had something to say about me, I would you know, be able to be funny as well. And then yeah. people were like, whoa, wait a minute. So it, I think part of my uh, background of, of being a performer just came from a mechanism of, yeah. I wouldn't say survival, but just kind of, it was Hoping. just something that, that I was good at. You know, it was, it, was, it was a talent and something that I enjoyed. You know, yeah. I was always the one that liked to kind of speak out and to do the accent or the impression of a teacher or a classmate. And Lucky for the world. Did you get in trouble for that? <laughs> you know, it's funny. I, I did. I think in, in sure. early on, it yeah. was like, what is wrong with you? Why, why are you doing this? And then it ended up being like, well, he's, this, he's doing his career. Well, uh, but also people like teachers don't like being mimicked as a rule, I would guess. So what, yeah. what was your family? Well, I never like? did. What? Yeah. Well, you know, I... To clarify that, I never did. My kind of sense of humor is never really about punching down. Oh, I'm more right. about kind of, I'm a storyteller. And uh -huh. I, I kind of pride myself on finding the right time to do my bits. Good so uh, teachers actually were the ones that encouraged me to okay, look at theater. Okay, I ask you about that. So uh, starting with yeah. your parents, do you have brothers and sisters? Yes, I have two brothers. Uh-huh. And are you the youngest, middle, oldest one? Yeah, I'm, I'm the youngest, uh -huh. so definitely, uh, you know, I love my brothers, Alex and Ted, and, yeah. um, you know, my did, family did was, parents, was so did, supportive. You what? I said my family was very supportive of me my whole life, okay. and so. So that's what I was curious about, because I think, you know, all talents have to be shined up at home or somehow encouraged, and so your parents yeah. saw this early on? Yeah, you know, what's funny is, I, yeah, I started doing speaking um, and I started fundraising for Little People of America when I was, I believe, 11. I could have been eight the first time oh, I, wow. okay, I did so my wait. first. So that's really interesting. So you're like an old hand at this before you get your acting jobs. Yeah, no, exactly. So I basically, I, I say I've been doing stand-up comedy since I was a kid Yeah. because... I would give speeches and I would always open up with like talking about how the podium was too high. Who planned this over here? Uh -huh. what, you know, what's this going? So I would, I learned really early on uh, as a public speaker 
that if I could break the ice, then they would listen, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that was the same kind of uh, tools that I learned just being a kid growing up on the playground. So I, I, I'm, I'm listening to you and thinking like giving permission to laugh is also a yeah. huge gift for your audience. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I think it's a huge gift for anybody. You know, yeah, if you true. take yourself too seriously. Um, right. So how did this all transfer to your first acting job? And what was it? Remember? Yeah, well, you know, I, as a kid, my dream was to be a professional athlete. I wanted to be a football player and a basketball player. And then uh, once I hit puberty, I, you know, I haven't grown really since I was, you know, in elementary school. I pretty much have been about the same height and everybody mm -hmm. shot up so high. Um, and so it became evident that I wasn't going to be able to really even play sports anymore once I hit junior high. Right. So that's when I had an amazing teacher that, you know, said, you're so good at these impressions and kind of being okay. funny in the class, you need to sign up for the, you know, our school play. So I started doing uh, plays in our school and then community theater. Um, so those would be really my first acting experiences. But even in elementary school, I was writing my own skits and performing them well, how, uh, from how my that, school. How did that shift to your first professional acting job and what was that you know I, well actually I was on Saturday Night Live um I got uh you know I had a small part um in a recurring character actually uh on Saturday Night Live but I had already been doing stand-up comedy mm -hmm. um so I went to school for business so yeah. even though I was into acting in high school and that was my new passion I ended up taking kind of a a hard left and I decided to go to school for business and I got a academic scholarship going to school but with for an eye towards what if you had to use it like what, what, are your what was that skills? with a, a degree in business studying business what would that have led to if that if you had not followed acting and you see yourself in business well actually I still kind of see myself in business in many senses I am my own business um True. and what I studied <laughs> Yeah, and so what I studied in school was marketing and entrepreneurship. Those were my majors. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've always been an entrepreneurial mindset um, as an artist. Let me create my own work. Let me, uh, you know, start a company. Let me start, create a web series, produce this movie. And then ultimately now I created and run the Easter Sales Disability Film oh, Challenge. Oh, so yes. All right. So I wanted to ask you about that. But first, can I ask <laughs> you, did you, did you have a preference between movies and television? You know, uh, what was your I've, favorite I've, movie role? My favorite movie role, you know, I, I got to say, I've, I've been honored to produce a lot of my own projects. Uh -huh. um, some of those have been short films where I've been able to be the love interest, the gangster, uh -huh. um, you know, a romantic lead. Mm -hmm. And those have been kind of unique. And it's been fun to be able to direct and write and produce and star in stuff that mm -hmm. I do myself. Uh, but I've also been honored to be in a lot of kind of kids movies and working for Disney and Netflix and, oh, okay. you know, really though, I would say my favorite projects overall in terms of film and TV, I got to work with Martin Scorsese on oh. Boardwalk Empire. Uh -huh. and, now, and last, the first time I contacted you, you were in Canada filming something. Was that? Yes. So I was, I was filming The Good Doctor, uh, oh, which no. was also just such an amazing experience. So I was filming that in Vancouver, and believe it or not, I filmed uh, seven different things in Vancouver. So <laughs> I've, I've been up there a lot. Nice. So you, it doesn't seem, listening to you, that you had to go through the discomfort of ever having been uncomfortable. Well, I mean, you know, I, I, I think that would be a lie to say. I think everybody goes through different periods where they're yeah. uncomfortable. You know, I... I, you know, just like every actor, I've had periods where I've struggled and, you know, I've had to come up with different ideas to further my career. And I think as any person, whether you're a little tall, you got a disability or not, you also have times where you're uncomfortable because that's life. And I wouldn't right. be a true so I'm, I'm, thinking, I'm just thinking more of, you know, those teenage years that can be so devastating, yeah. you know, but apparently you always attracted people and had friends and... I can see yeah, that. you know, I, I got to be honest, you know, uh, there was a period where when I was in junior high, that was tougher uh, for me. That was a period. I've had a lot of surgeries. So I've had complete reconstructive surgery on my hips, ankles, knees. 
Oh, and that's, and that's having to do with um, being a little person? Yeah, so I have pseudoachondroplasia dwarfism, uh, which is a rare form of dwarfism. And I, as a kid, was, wasn't able to stand for longer than like 10 seconds. And so uh -huh. I had to have complete reconstructive surgery. Um, and that required, you know, a couple months in the hospital and then body cast for like four months and then well, learn how difficult. to walk again. So I was, and, I was aware of this. Yeah. Until talking to Mary Lou Nacarado, which I'm sure you know her. Oh, uh, yeah. Maybe. And she, and she talked about the physical things that happen with dwarfism. And I was, of course, you know, to say I was unaware of that is like tip of the iceberg, how much I've been unaware of in life, but. Well, you know, you know, what's interesting about that is there's over 200 forms of dwarfism. So I heard. <laughs> so, you know, what, when I talk about my experience, they could be very different from another little, little person sure. that's listening. So sure. I can't speak uh, unilaterally for all little people, but yes, some of us do have to have surgeries, but I got to say that the process of having surgery ended up making me a much stronger and resilient person um, mm. because, you know, I had my first surgeries when I was a kid. It didn't phase me. Then I went through a tough period well, in junior how high. You, how old were you when you had your first surgeries? So my first surgeries I had when I was 11. Okay. Um, and so that process, you know, I was just a kid and it was easy to deal with. And as you know, it was just something I did. And, mm -hmm. but, in between my first set of surgeries when I was 11 and the second set when I was 16 was junior high. And that was a period where, it, you know, it's hard. It's hard to be uh, going through puberty. It's, it's awkward for everybody, but when you're a little person, it was extra awkward. Um, okay, let, me, let me ask you something. Well, let, let's talk about, yeah, extra awkward, sure. Uh, let's, let's talk about the Easter Seals film challenge. And yeah. so I wanted to give people a chance to know that part of you and what you do because sure. I think, I, I'm guessing that everyone in the film industry knows about it. And I'm guessing that everybody in the disability community knows about it. But I think people in general might not know about it. So will yeah. you talk about that? And, and I see now that since you've been doing this since you're 11, it was no big stretch for you to found this. Will you just say what it is? Sure. So the Easter Sales Disability Film Challenge is a weekend film competition where over the course of a weekend, participants write, shoot, edit, and create three to five minute films that have somebody with a disability in front of or behind the camera. And the whole reasoning behind this is, as I said earlier, I've been creating my own work and work leads to work. So the fact that I've been in over 40 TV shows and movies the majority of these opportunities of working with the Farley Brothers, Martin Scorsese, network TV shows has come from me creating my own content. So with the film challenge, I wanted to empower other people with disabilities to create work for themselves, both in front of and behind the camera. And what about families of people with disabilities? Are they, um, they have the same opportunity? Absolutely. So each film needs to have so anybody, one person. Anybody can, anybody can take up this challenge. Sure. So the okay. challenge is open to people from all over the world. And each film has to have one person with a disability in front of or behind yeah, the camera. Right, and now the interesting thing about this is this film challenge is all about collaboration because work leads to work and there's allies that are along the way. But ultimately through my career, I've gotten hired by one person who leads to the next job, who leads to the next uh -huh, job. I was uh -huh. on The Sopranos and that led to Boardwalk Empire. I was yeah. on private practice and then now I'm on The Good Doctor. And they don't always correlate. But the fact is, you're, that when you're on set, you're, you're building your community. And in terms of you asking the question about families, that's a really interesting question you asked. Because the film challenge, what's really unique about this are the variety uh, that happens within the films. So we have Oscar and Emmy winners that take part in the film challenge now. Uh, now both you're in front Oscar of and Emmy winners who are not themselves disabled, but what? So yeah, we have Oscar and Emmy winners, including Marsha Gay Harden, who won oh, an I Oscar for yeah. yeah, for acting in uh, Mystic River. And she has, you know, acted in a film. We've had, you know, Emmy winners, direct films, and so in all different roles. So it's all about the inclusion of it. So you just need one, one person with a disability in front of or behind the camera. But with that being said, so 
the spectrum is. We do have Oscar and Emmy winners that take part in the challenge, but then we also have families that take part every year. Now they love it. They have a son with Down syndrome or their nephew is in a wheelchair or mm -hmm. their uh, daughter is a little person. And they do this as a family exercise that they just do with minimal resources. And we've seen some films go on to be finalists and even award winners that were done uh, with iPhones or, you know, yeah. oh, DSLR so cameras. I wanted to ask you something about, because now, of course, I think we're all aware of the fact that life has changed because of the pandemic and isolation and not being able to. So this business of this challenge must be going on as strong as ever if people can do this from the privacy of their own homes. I mean, these people who want to make these films aren't, they're not stumped, are they? They're not, they're not. So it's, it's, it's uh, really interesting that you brought that up because, you know, we're actually sponsored by all the major networks and studios, uh, CBS Entertainment, Diversity and Inclusion, Viacom, CBS, NBC uh -huh. Universal, Sony Pictures, HBO, you know, a lot of big networks, Sony Pictures Entertainment, but ultimately, and we even have a contract so that sag after performers can take part in the film challenge without being paid upfront fees. Oh, okay, so the so union has to support this, that. Yeah. yeah, so the union has been a supporter since, because I started this, the Disability Film Challenge in 2013. I partnered with Easter Sales Southern California in 2017. Now, some of you guys may not know who Easter Sales is. Oh, Easter good. Sales yeah, yeah. is the nation's largest disability services organization. They've what been around. They what do they do? Because I don't know. I've heard of it all my life. Easter seals, you buy them. You buy those Easter seals. Yes. Ever since I was a child, and this is like in the 40s. Yeah. Right? So, so, they they provide, so they provide disability services. What um, is that? So that's a variety of different services for, uh, for children, for adults. Some of those, uh, you know, they do autism therapy. They do job placement. They do veteran um, oh, see, opportunities. Okay. So there's so there's actually 65 different affiliates of Easter Seals around mm -hmm. the nation, and each of these affiliates do different services, um, but they're all related. And for a hundred years, they've been providing these life changing services for people with disabilities and their families. Thank you um, for saying all this because I have a feeling this is going to be news to a lot of people. Well, that's great. And, you know, anywhere you are, there is a great Easter Seals uh, affiliate. You know, I know that, you know, the Cleveland, uh, you know, for those uh, individuals in Ohio, I know that the uh, Easter Seals was actually started in Ohio. Is so right? 100 years ago, that's where uh, Easter Seals began. Okay. So, and and I know this, I've right? been to Cincinnati and I've done, uh, you know, keynoted uh, and also been the MC for some of their amazing kind of uh, events and there's just great services. So anywhere you are listening, I really advise you to see if you can get involved. Um, you know, sometimes they have uh, 5K walks. Sometimes oh, if, my you're, goodness. Okay. if you're somebody that um, needs support, uh, I would really advise you to go to Easter Seals uh, website and look in uh, and type in for your uh, in region and contact them. You know, they may what be able to provide services. This is just information is a bag of gold. Yeah. I, I have something on another, I mean, on a related topic that I've always been curious about. And, you know, I'm, it's probably just indicates what a dunderhead I am. But <laughs> what, what qualifies a person as a person with a disability? And the reason sure. I ask this is because I know several people who have disabilities. And I don't see how they're disabled at all. They've got fabulous careers. They've got families. They've got children. They've got friends. What, what qualifies a person to be disabled? And how far do we have to look to see that these, somebody who has a disability doesn't seem to be disabled? There, you know, there's the, the, the Shriners Children Hospital has a wonderful ad. And you, I'm sure you're familiar with them. Yes. And they, and they ran on TV for a while. It was just wonderful and it had a variety of kids before the camera and one maybe had just one leg or an artificial leg and whatever their disability was and they they camera would pan in on them and refer to them as disabled and each child would say disabled not me yeah and well then, you know here, here's here's something and again 
you know, there's 61 million Americans with some form of disability. The, uh, the Center for Disease Control did a uh, survey that found that one in four Americans have some form of disability. And the, to the first part of your question, You're talking about what, physical or cognitive. So the, okay, uh, cognitive, you know, yeah. so th that could be all kinds of invisible disabilities, uh, emotional, mental well, health, I autism, wanted, Down I syndrome. To add those in. Absolutely. Because they're emotional, we consider like severe mental illness, sure. but also emotional that we don't count. Yeah, well, we do. You know, here's the thing, you know, that, that the uh, Americans with Disabilities Act, that we just celebrated the 30th anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act. I had the privilege of uh, speaking with Bob Dole uh, way back 19 years ago uh, when I was a young lad. Uh, and I introduced the Secretary of Labor, Elaine Chow. And so I've been involved with the Americans with Disabilities Act, but also I've been impacted by the Disabilities Act. Uh, you know, since it pretty much it began. Those provided uh, uh, amazing legislation for me as in terms of having the school that I went to be fully accessible for me. Uh, uh, so, okay. you know, there's all these different disabilities. So when we talk yeah. about disability, it's not just somebody in a wheelchair. There's all kinds of different disabilities. Well, that's and those are all that. encompassed yeah. by the Americans with Disabilities Act. And so, okay. and I would say to the second part of your question, you know, Really, I think there's so much pride in disability right now. Uh -huh. So there's a really smart guy named Lawrence Carter Long. Now, Lawrence Carter Long, he is a gentleman with cerebral palsy and he's a disability activist. And he was on NPR and he had a whole campaign that said, say the word, disability. It's not a bad word, we should say it. And so even when I came up with the Disability Film Challenge, even before partnering with Easter Seals, it was important for me to have this be disability film challenge. Okay, now this so is something I'm proud of to be, yeah, so to be you're, a you're person with a disability. Really nice distinction and helpful for me. Yeah. With my question in a way as to having a disability and saying that out loud doesn't have to do with what you're able to accomplish. It's a separate thing. Well, I don't think that that you know. See, I I think to be honest that. You're, you're seeing it as that the word disability is a bad thing. I'm seeing no, no, it as I'm it's not. a good thing. I'm, no, no, I'm, no, but I'm just saying, oh. and, I, and that's okay. I'm not saying that in a bad way. I'm saying in general, this is not just to you. I'm saying people in general. Sometimes when they hear the word disability, there's been uh, a lot of, you know, stigmatization around it as being bad. Uh -huh. But now we're, we're saying, hey, let's take back this word. This is a good word, and that having a disability doesn't define who you are as an okay, actor or, that's, or that's, father. That's, that's what I'm getting at, and I Absolutely. think, yes, I'm seeing that people do feel that when they see disability. Like, what yeah. can, you know, so an, another question is, with this Easter Seals Film Channel Challenge, do you, is your goal any way connected with getting more people with disabilities roles in mainstream, I mean, I always wondered, you know, being an old woman now and having seen movies <laughs> all my life and having known people with disabilities, you, you never saw a little person as a surgeon or, I mean, you did yeah. see, what's his name, Raymond Burr in a wheelchair for some reason and, you know, um, as an attorney, but in general, you don't see, you don't yeah, see, so, there's, so there's no reason a little person shouldn't be a leading man or a, a surgeon or a whatever it is, you want more of that. I'm Absolutely. Guessing. So the whole goal of the film challenge, the mission of the Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge is to create more opportunities for people with disabilities in front of and behind the camera and to in turn change the way the world sees disability. And you're getting some places, because I know, I know John Pazis with Performing Arts Studio West Absolutely. Is finding, oh, God bless that man. He's finding jobs for people. Yes. You know, we how, have how been are we so, doing in this area. We, uh, I, I'm feeling so honored. If you go to disabilityfilmchallenge.com, I'm going to do click, that. You click the challenge tab and hit uh -huh. the success stories, you'll see some of the jobs that have come up. But okay. every week we're being contacted by studios, by networks. See, a lot of people are aware of the problem of the lack of inclusion of people with disabilities in front sure. of and behind the camera. The film challenge is a solution to that problem because yeah, you can't can just talk about the problem. You have to create a film. 
And when you create your own project, you're creating your own job opportunity and you're creating something to be seen in. So all the time, network studios, producers, directors are saying, hey, I'd like to see uh, this guy from this film or this girl from that film, or do you have any, yeah. Well, also I'm guessing that people want to see people that represent themselves. That's, that's really what it's about, you know. I mean, you, how, you say one in four Americans are um, disabled. That is to say they're officially given that title as disabled. Well, you can yeah. claim it. You don't, <laughs> this no, is I'm one of these titles that, that just, you, uh, but when, we, but when you, you can, say when you say one out of four, somebody's counting yes, and, yes. you know, tracking. You know, that, this, this is part of the, the, uh, the issue and what we're up against, I think, in the disability community. What's is that? that right now there's a lot of people with disabilities that have a hard time self-identifying. They, uh -huh. they have a hard time saying, hey, I have a disability and I'm a great lawyer and I'm a great doctor yeah. and I'm a great actor. You know, uh -huh. it's okay. And I think that now as a society, we, people are looking for us. They're looking to fully in, integrate us into society. And I, I would say in a big way, the film and, and television industry. So if you're listening and you're an actor or you're a writer or you're a, a person with a disability that works behind the camera, please self-identify yourself as somebody oh, with a disability. How, how wonderful that you're offering that. But I, I just noticed that you did something that yeah. is so crucial to communicating. And you said, uh, people with a disability and a great lawyer, or people with a disability and a great, you never use the word but. And this is a big problem in how people communicate. You know, they'll say, well, he's disabled, but he's a really good, no but about it. Absolutely. You know, so I'm so glad that you kind of made that, that point. It's the and word. Yeah. That is helpful. Yeah. And more accurate. Yeah, I, I think for me, you know, I'm a little person, my wife's a little person. But that doesn't define. How did you meet? How did you meet? Oh, we met actually through a mutual I'm always friend. Like basic, basically, I'm just your basic busybody. So I always like <laughs> to the story. Go ahead. So we met uh, a little over 10 years ago. Uh -huh. And it was actually fate because I'm she sure. was leaving. She was leaving as I was just showed up. And uh -huh. my friend um, was talking to her and she said, oh, I'm leaving. And she said she was looking for advice about acting at the time. Uh -huh. Now she works in development, but at the time she was looking for advice about acting. And so uh, my friend happened to say, oh, that, this is my best friend coming over here, Nick Novicki. He's an actor. Why don't you talk to him as she was leaving? And then, you know, we started to just kind of talk as friends. And then, you know, now we've been married five years in, in two weeks. But if I had showed up five minutes later, we wouldn't have met each other. There you go. Yeah. So you've got faith to that. I want to thank you for doing this. I have learned oh, I thank you. so much today. And, you know, if I, if I can, um, you know, I, I was talking before about this year and, and how it, this has been a very challenging year for many people. Um, you know, we had to delay this year's Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge because of the oh. coronavirus. Yeah. But then we relaunched and we had a home edition of documentary films and we had the most films ever created. And we have 87 surprised. amazing films. So if you go to disabilityfilmchallenge.com, I really hope you check out all these amazing films oh, I'm gonna, and features. Okay, I'm going to let people know more about this too. But also I can see where during this isolation time, families are looking for ways to do things together. And mm -hmm. what a wonderful project for a family to make movies together. Oh, absolutely. Day. And, and mm -hmm. even beyond that, because as you know, as I said, we're already past this year's cycle of the film uh -huh. challenge. But if you're listening and you, and you want to get involved next year, we will have a film challenge. But what you could be doing right now is watching these amazing films. Okay. Uh, they're well, all I, available I, on I our website. One, I have one last question to ask you, because I know I wish we could just stay here for hours. I have so much uh, to learn. But as I am basically about love letters, let me just sure. ask you, which I always like to do. If you were to write a love letter right now, who would you be writing to? I mean, I've listened well, I would, to you for several minutes and there's so many people in your life that I'm tempted to write them a letter. I, I would have to write that letter to my wife. You know, I love her, you know, and, and she's just there for me every step of the way okay. with the film hey, challenge. I you'll do that. You know, even when you're living with somebody, a letter that comes in the mail to that person just is such an explosive treat. And I, I always want to say that 
you know, I hear people say all the time, we all hear it, and you've got cameras and all kinds of um, instruments at your behest, you know, but people say, oh, I wish I had a magic wand. And here's where I like to come in and say, you have one. And here it is. It is the pen with which you write this letter. So you know, I, I, you well. I agree 100%. And, and I'll, I'll, I'm a big fan of writing letters. You know, Are all you? of our okay. film challenge judges, I write personal letters. We give them a gift. We, uh, in general, you know, I, I'll just say this in closing. You know, when I worked on Boardwalk Empire, I got a handwritten letter from Martin Scorsese oh. welcoming me to the set. And that was really one of the most touching things in my life. I'm extra so, impressed with him now. Yes. So love, le love letters are what, what it's all about. And thank I, you. I can't thank okay. you enough for, for having thank me on you, your dear. show. So if for, there's if there's anything else you ever want to talk about, it's you know, a new direction in your whole film challenge or in um, movie opportunities for the disabled or anything new and you'd sure. like to do this again, just give me a holler. All right, that sounds great. Okay, thanks thank so you much. Bye. Bye.